Starseed Mission Support. I'm trying to stop this video that's playing over here. There you go. <laughs> oh. Hey everybody, welcome to Starseed Mission Support. <laughs> okay, no, Echoes, there you go. <laughs> I'm so excited to be back here with all of you this week. Um, we apologize for missing last week. I was driving through Utah and I um, did not have service and I was really tired. <clears throat> and so I decided to plan better this week and I'm here at this really cute little tiny house on the Mississippi River in Minnesota. And I'm really excited to report to you uh, the things that we've been experiencing on our grid work journey. So welcome. I'm so excited to um, talk with you guys about grid work some more. I got, received a lot of emails and comments um, from the last weeks and you guys had a lot of questions about grid work. You really want to participate and that is so exciting to me. And so we're going to do a deep dive. Um, so we're here at the Mississippi River because um, when Shane and I were about to embark on this journey, we did a quantum hypnosis session where Shane was put under hypnosis and we would connect with our galactic angelic team and ask for guidance and the Mississippi was one place that came up in our session that was recommended that we go and they didn't really give us much more information than that and so we just got here yesterday sometime and definitely want to talk about my findings <laughs> um, but just before we do that I'm gonna give a little bit of background on um, I find that when I go on a journey like this um, oftentimes the whole journey unfolds like a story and every location that we go to brings in information that kind of adds and compounds on the previous location and it weaves this um, bigger mission or bigger story that's unfolding with every location that we go to and so um, last week we spent the week in the megaliths in Montana and I'm gonna be uploading the videos <laughs> I know I told you guys that I would be making lots of updates but <laughs> um, it's been kind of difficult because um, we've been driving a lot and I've been really tired and I greatly greatly underestimated the amount of time that it actually takes to edit videos and upload them onto the internet and so um, I said that I would be making lots of updates but I really have just been collecting lots of footage which means that you will be receiving that footage at some point it's gonna be really beautiful um, but unfortunately I have fallen behind on my social media posting and if any of you want to give me any tips on that, I would greatly appreciate it because I kind of just live in the wild, you know, I brush my hair when I go on camera when I need to and I shower once in a while, but really, I just exist. So if you guys have tips on how I can stay on top of posting on social media, because I would actually really like to. I think that what we're experiencing is extraordinary and I would love to share more of this magic that's unfolding in real time with all of you, but it's been proven a little bit difficult. <laughs> um, with all that being said, I'm really excited to be here with you today. Um, we have a really deep subject that I'm beginning to open the energy fields here. Um, we're going to sink into a uh, more of a meditative space before we open the discussion about the amnesia field, which is the most prevalent, it's the most prevalent theme that's been coming up in our grid work session so far. So I invite everyone to just take a deep breath and just let's get into our bodies for a moment and just breathe, slow down, feel your skin. Maybe you even wanna just touch your body and just feel a sense of all rightness. Like the air is kind and the universe is benevolent and there's just something very loving, generous, bountiful, and kind all around us. And as we settle into connection, what we're doing is we're beginning to connect into the elemental realms. And we can connect into the elemental realms through our elemental body, our somatic body that is made of the elements, made of our flesh, our sensory body that experiences life. 
on a moment to moment basis. And we're just breathing and slowing down. And if we have, you know, if we spend a lot of time on the computer or at work, then we're literally shifting our brainwave state from, you know, this, I don't even know what the scientific word is, but it feels very frenetic into this more calm and peaceful, connected state. And if you need to breathe and let out a sigh, we're again just sinking our energy into a more subtle frequency so that we can open up the conversation into a more psychic place. Okay, so let's actually connect in for a moment. Let's just put our hands on our hearts and close your eyes. And we're going to make a connection up to every person's highest source connected aspects of self. And we're smiling right into our core of our being. Saying hello to our soul. (sighs) The part of ourself that is ever deeply connected to the source of all of life. And then we're going to make a connection to every person's source-connected galactic and jelly that work in alliance with the laws of unified creation, divine love, divine co-creation, divine order. Okay, and we're opening up the field and we're feeling that glittery, beautiful, joyful energy as we're connecting in with the higher self and our team. And we're bringing that energy right down, almost as if it's a column, just showering right down over our body. We're purifying our field. And let's go ahead and run that clearing frequency right through our being so that any energies um, of distortion or not of love, not of joy, can just wash away in this energy shower that we're taking with the essence of our own highest source connected aspects of self. Whew. And then just land that right into the earth. Whew. And let's allow that energy to um, create a restoration in the land beneath your location so that all of the ley lines and the energies and the planetary shields below your body are restored back to the original source energy holding potential okay all the way down into the core so through the power lines and the pipes and whatever else is under the all the funny business right clearing all the way through restoring the planet's original divine source vibration holding potential all the way through the earth into the ground So you guys let me know if the noise in the background is bothersome. You can write it in the comment section if you feel like the noise is bothering you. And I can totally relocate. But it seems to quiet down. That feels really good. Okay. So welcome. I feel like now that we have connected in, there's one more step here. Actually, let's go ahead and connect in with our heart. And our heart, I love that heart. Um, I've been calling the heart our heart star lately because it's definitely feeling like, um, I like that term because the stars, they have different, there's different kinds of stars. Some stars um, emanate energy and other stars they I guess they emanate so much energy that they like reverse gravity and they become a black hole (laughs) and sometimes in our life when we go through trauma and things it can almost feel like our heart star can be so traumatized that it reverses its field and there's a lot of programming in the world that is specifically um, out there to reverse the field of our heart star right so there's a lot of programs like various um, alien love bite scenarios and false twin scenarios and dark mother fallen father programs and familial abuse and addiction (laughs) and basically everything really everything that's out there because humans human beings are such 
sensitive and beautiful and precious creatures you know the way that the ai has created these distortion fields and these belief systems and these prison systems has really been a very extremely traumatic experience for all human beings that these soft very soft gentle bodies or soft gentle precious and pure souls and bodies were not created to experience the level of pain and trauma that has been artificially inseminated onto this planet by negative ETs and etc. So all of that has created, you know, walls and distortions in our heart start that's keeping our heart from emanating and rotating and creating the magnetic field around our body to keep us healthy and in a state of divine union and joy, which is kind of when our heart is in its natural state, you know, the human body and our consciousness and our emotions naturally exist in a state of happiness and joy and fulfillment and connection. And so we realize that most people, you know, we're not existing in that state all the time and when we turn on the tv you realize that the tv is really just trying to hijack that state of being all the time and this bird has an opinion so it's just sharing it with you <laughs> so we're going to connect in with our heart here and we're going to connect in with the vibration of the heart of the pleiades this vibration has been coming in for connection and for support a lot this last week. I've fallen asleep just immersing my field with the vibration of the heart of the Pleiades and just have received so much healing <clears throat> and had really intense dreams from this. So it's kind of a hack, right? So we close our eyes and we're going to just become the Pleiadian star system and particularly focusing on the heart, the center of the Pleiades supercluster. And almost as if our own heart becomes the heart of the Pleiades, you see that there's actually a stargate here that connects out into the angelic realms of Andromeda. And so we're just allowing these beautiful high vibrational star energies to nourish our body and our consciousness <sighs> and feel how then the heart begins to emanate that beautiful starlight and then it feels like our aura becomes this impenetrable um, orb. Not that it's rigid and it can't be penetrated, but that it's just so much emanating with love that really, you know, it's like things are just flying off it. And no matter how, it's like the harsher the vibrations, the less impact it has on your field because it's not in resonance with your being. <clears throat> all right so now that we're surrounded by our galactic angelic teams and our friends in the davic realm our dragons our fairies our elementals <sighs> we're connected to our own heart star and we're here in the space together i think we are ready to dive into this conversation about the amnesia field and at this point, I feel like those of you that are following my work, you know that Z kind of um, <laughs> just is, I think one of the gifts that I have is articulating things that I think everybody feels and everybody experiences and everybody raises their eyebrows and say, hey, that's kind of weird, but don't have the words for it. And I feel like I'm being initiated into just another level of that, of really owning up to that being my purpose um, because I do feel like this gift of orating and being able to articulate things that are difficult to put words to comes with its own set of responsibilities. And for me, that ability to orate is coupled with my ability to perceive things in a very specific way. And I feel like this is partially 
you know, having um, my experience as a light field geneticist from the angelic realm, what that basically means is that I perceive reality through densities of energy and geometries um, and frequencies. I think frequency, the, the language of frequency, it's kind of um, one that I'm very fluent in. So this is particularly um, kind of shown in my session work where I'm able to pick up the frequencies in a person's field where I'm able to go to a place and pick up the frequencies and the memories of the space um, that's really what it is is that when we um, cultivate our very keen subtle ability to pick up information and this is you know a lot of people say well I'm an empath well empaths you're that's the capability right as an empath we're able to pick up vibrational energy now for the most part in the new age community when we talk about you know empath um, energies we're mostly talking about you know gross not disgusting like gross like big <laughs> like um, large oscillations of emotional energy that is a um, kind of a coarse energy right so when we move through um, this recognition that okay we can pick up emotional information that means that we can actually cultivate even more subtle forms we can sharpen our intuitive knife we can sharpen and um, zone in on our ability to sense frequencies and over time when we do our psychic astral push-ups we're going to be able to pick up keener and keener and even more subtle frequencies of energy and this is really important because i personally feel like you know when let's take the example of you know when we are when we were totally asleep when we are totally asleep in the false matrix, the false matrix literally does all of these things to dull our senses, right? With TV and very static frequencies and sugar and extreme tastes and addictions, all of these things are kind of very gross or very large, coarse vibrations that dull our senses. And so the reason for that is like when humans have their keen sense of subtle energy perception activated then we're going to start to pick up memories we're going to start communicating interdimensionally and then all of a sudden we wake up and realize the false matrix is what it is and so in order to keep humans imprisoned inside of the artificial constru construct it had to dull humanity's senses from a young age and so Basically, when we are waking up out of the false matrix, we are realizing that these are all the ways that our human self had been abused, right? When a, a newborn child is born into the world, they are so sensitive and they're so keen and they're so connected and it's like they, they can be very telepathic, right? They're so sensitive and I think that, you know, people think that when kids grow up, then they grow out of it. But really, they're supposed to be held and they're meant to develop those senses so that even when they grow into adulthood, they actually enhance those abilities and not just let those abilities you know, die and become a half alive human being, the false matrix. So now, as you can see, when we're waking up out of false matrix, we realize then that our role as we're healing is not just that we have to heal our emotional body or our physical body from the toxins that we have been you know inundated by but as we begin to restore our pineal gland and our aura we begin to restore these original capabilities of our um, of our senses which is our ability to, to sense very fine minute frequencies and this is the beginning of tele telepathy and being able to communicate with Davic um, realm creatures like fairies and tree spirits and all of those things it's like this whole interdimensional multi-dimensional magical realm opens up that allows us to communicate um, through the veil and through the false matrix and all of that happens through the cultivation of our subtle sense capabilities. So all of that is really important because we're talking about the amnesia field today, right? And again, part of um, the way that the reason why I'm able to perceive things in this very architectural way is because, you know, as a geneticist from a higher dimension, that's basically you are an architect 
and your architect what are what you're architecting is structures of consciousness and universal intelligence and so what that means is that as a human being and i'm perceiving from 3d i'm really perceiving upwards or outwards through the densities into all of them into all of the all the dimensionalities right so as i'm traveling and doing this grid work um, i'm able to scan the field scan the reality and see kind of the discrepancies or the distortions from the 3d upwards into the multi-dimensionality and what i've you know been seeing for the last few years is this thing that i call the amnesia field so whew, okay i'm just gonna ground for a second <laughs> okay so it is understood that human bodies have a lot of capabilities beyond what we're told we're definitely not just these meat suits that are meant to work in an office <laughs> it's just ridiculous <laughs> so um many many different ets <laughs> and higher dimensional beings understand that our human dna when it is in its healed non-manipulated <laughs> original state um, a human being is a body in the physical that is meant to experience itself as divinity or as source right that means the body is capable of perceiving and experiencing all dimensionalities of universal consciousness from inside of this vessel i think that's pretty freaking awesome now if that's the case then we know that the body has all of these latent dormant cidic powers okay and the word cidic i think cidic is it's basically um i saw a cardinal <laughs> cidic power is basically uh, an expression of the physicality that is beyond normal right so miraculous healing bilocation telepathy all of the things that we deem are beyond normal but have been documented all over the world in ancient texts and in modern yogic texts and even ex exam um, there are examples of people walking around right now that are miracle healing people and you know tumors are disappearing and they are um kind of um bilocating i think there's an island in like the french um i can't remember what island there is i, I don't i don't know but um it's let's see it was in the tom canyon book but he talks about going to this island where basically there are only these monks that live there and there's like this big river and this french town and the only way you can get from the town from the the island to the town is by you know going on this boat and the weather is like super you know there's just thunderstorms all the time and sometimes there'd be a thunderstorm and people in the village would just see a monk walking around in the grocery store and they're like how the heck did he get there and it's just commonly accepted that these monks just know how to bilocate into the town and they don't it's like if somebody's trying to ride a boat to their island they can just you know make a thunderstorm and they're like nope not today you know it's a giant moat anyway <laughs> i understand that life um, <clears throat> all that is to say there are all of these examples of people that have activated these very specific powers inside of their body acidic powers so i think that humanity is moving through this evolutionary evolutionary step where humans are finally um coming into actuation of our potential you know we've always been intended to be a divine race that can embody these traits of god and we're finally at a time in our evolutionary process where we're touching that possibility and i think is actually just you know the ai and the negative aliens these things are just in the movie for added drama right it just wouldn't be a very good movie if you know you come you finally evolve out of the water from the amphibians and from an ape and you finally become the modern human and then you just become god it's like anticlimactic right so you need some villains in there and that's why we have what we have it's just you know some added drama added suspense but basically um i think that many of us that are tuning into this um stream right now the star seeds you know especially the star seeds because 
starseeds are beings from other um, galaxies and other star systems and even other universes and I believe that we have existed in places that are not as physically dense as this 3D earth right in those places it was a lot easier to remember and to embody our divine potential and so we learn how to um, bilocate and fly and instantaneously materialize things in these other realms and have went on our ascended mastery path and have cultivated divine qualities right so that's why the star seeds feel naturally connected <laughs> what you guys see <laughs> what <laughs> that's why the star seeds feel naturally connected to things that are spiritual connected to the angels feel like we have this lofty spiritual energy about us and it's because you know we come from those higher realms and we really are very excited to bring that level of source mastery into this physical body because we're literally completing an evolution evolutionary cycle in the universe by doing that and so <laughs> this is all a very long preface which we're getting to the amnesia field which i think is one of the most fascinating conversations we could have but they, we just need to talk about a whole bunch of things before we can get there <laughs> all right drink some water Don't worry, we've not forgotten the amnesia field. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. So as these frequencies are coming in, I feel like these are literally unlocking doors in our DNA. These frequencies, you know, these transmission is coming through to activate and assist in the starseed's remembrance of our true path, our true destiny, right? Because there's a lot of funny business in the new age spiritual community where it's like, oh yeah, starseeds, we just play with crystals. There's nothing serious here. <laughs> we don't, you know, don't, don't pay any attention to us. We don't have any superpowers. Like, you know, it's just this pretentious kind of fluffy spirituality. And it's like, okay, now these frequencies are coming and the galactics are like, all right, guys, we are, we're really getting to the juicy stuff. And I think a lot of you are probably on the edge of your seat being like, I'm here to activate my cynic powers. <laughs> Where are my powers? <laughs> Give them back to me. Right? We're ready. Whew. Okay. Okay. So, the reason why it was so important for me to bring in that piece about human potential is because, you know, that's what the amnesia field is perpetuating the forgetfulness of. And it's quite insidious because, um, so this started when we were um, on this trip, when we were at these um, big boulders and the megaliths in Montana. And as the song was coming through, and I was singing to the rocks and the rocks, they're so like goofy. <laughs> they just love the songs. They're just like, <laughs> they're so funny. But anyway, they, <laughs> <laughs> I was like seeing to these rocks and helping them because the songs wake the stone beings, wake them up. Um, they've been asleep. They have information for humanity. They have a lot of wisdom that they're holding. And it just takes the specific vibrations to oscillate into the rocks to wake them up. So as we were waking up these rocks, I was seeing these tears um, in time space, which is really filled with consciousness, right? So let's say that human beings, okay, this is how it all ties in here and I'm trying to articulate, so just bear with me. I believe that human beings were intended to be a creator race. And what that means is that our DNA and our consciousness are holographically projecting into the living reality, right? And through that, you know, this is the doorway into which we're going to instantaneously materialize things. 
And this is something that, you know, Kara used to say when she would visit me and she would say, I'm here to teach you how to materialize things out of thin air. And I really believe that this is something that we're capable of doing. Um, once we repair our DNA and come back into complete coherence and embodiment of our original divine um, core being. However, if we know that our DNA is capable of interacting with the time field, with the hologram of external physical reality um, then we know that in order for the false matrix to even exist humanity would have to be kept in a state of consistent forgetting or amnesia of ourself as creator beings so what happens when billions of people are in a false reality that is complete in disconnection from source is that this reality, this planetary sphere um, begins to fall right into that amnesia and that fall creates these tears that literally keeps source energy from flowing through the planetary sphere um, coherently. So I would love for you guys to give me feedback if what I'm saying is making sense because sometimes it just sounds like words are coming out of my mouth and I, it doesn't make sense in my own brain. <laughs> I just like I have a signal and words are coming out and I can't even hear what I'm saying. That's like my internal experience of these things. <laughs> so let me know if I'm making sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This amnesia field, it's filled with so much grief and sadness. Um, because every single human being on this planet is an innocent and pure and, and God-filled mammal, warm-blooded, emotional, intelligent and sensitive being now a lot of us might say well I went to the grocery store yesterday I did not seem those people are very intelligent well <laughs> all every single human being on this planet was created you know when those babies came out of the birth portal they were delicate and beautiful and pristine and beautiful okay so every single human being on this planet is designed to experience that connection with divinity that connection with life and that is our natural state of being and so even though people are not aware of the amnesia field people are interacting and existing inside of the amnesia field each and every day and that separation you know and, and experiencing that separation, this is when we feel that emptiness, right? That dissatisfaction, that something is missing, that, um, that there's something wrong and we just can't put a finger on it. And we're just trying to get by. Then we're slopping down the pharmaceuticals and the antidepressants. And that's actually just, you know, totally ripping more holes in our elemental body. Whew. And, you know, this is a very um, painful place so the reason why it's so important for the awareness to come up is because this helps us bridge the gap and what i mean by that is sometimes you know in the new age community we can get very divisive right it's like oh well you know the, the people that are awakening are awakening and there's a great bifurcation and good luck to the muggles we'll see you next life you know they're screwed and it's like well we kind of live on a unified planetary sphere here so <laughs> there's no separation and you know if you sat down on the grid and just meditated then you immediately are connected to the collective consciousness on the planet and so it's really quite illusory to believe that you know we can um, experience heaven on earth and bypass what's happening on the 3d now that doesn't mean that we freak out and we try to run around and go to the grocery store and shake people awake it is not what i'm saying we should do however working with the consciousness field itself i think it's something that i'm personally being called to do with greater and greater um practice 
and mastery um, because um, yes it is quite like building a bridge okay Whew, and this ties into um, okay so this is grid work there are a couple of different kinds of grid work and I think that this um, one of them is that you go on the earth and you work with the physical ley lines kind of like acupuncture right you put acupuncture uh, needles on your major pressure points and your meridian that allows the energy to flow through your body and encourages the unblocking of blockages and then there's psychic grid work which is um, a grid work that I think I am more um, I, I naturally do a lot more it seems like my gifts are um, activated in this sector of grid work I've not really heard many other people talk about this specifically but I know that there are other people that do it so basically what psychic grid work is is we're working with the grid the grid systems of collective consciousness and we'll see that collective consciousness and the physical grid actually begins to weave and intermingle as we are here with the Mississippi River, right? And Shane and I were talking earlier today about how the Mississippi River, like there's all of these river systems that feed into the Mississippi River that is this like major vein, the spinal column that goes down through the United States. Um, and rivers, you know, they're really a cleansing system. It's kind of like the lymphatic system of your body. And, whew, it's too many things, too many things. They're like, all the things, all the things. <laughs> so, all the things. <laughs> Do a quick clearing here. Let's just ground it in real quick. Whew. Michael Scott says definition of hell equals separation from divinity. <laughs> it's just funny because it's the office. So sorry I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm just um, <laughs> I'm gonna um, just highlight this real quick. <laughs> yeah, the definition of hell is separation from divinity. This is exactly true. And the amnesia field is exactly doing that, perpetuating that separation, right? Perpetuating that hellish reality equals the false matrix. That is definitely true. Exactly. Okay. Whew, okay. So here is what superheroes are made of. Okay. So, if you just wake up one morning from the false matrix and you've done basically no practice, you've not really done any self-healing work, you don't meditate, you don't try to amplify your amplitude of your energy in any way, and you just say, well, I'm going to go and defeat the false matrix, and you just go <laughs> into the you go into the place where the AI is at, and, and you just go in there, um, I would be a little bit concerned because that is what it's called delusions, right? It's like, yes, you are a superhero and superheroes still need to train and we still need to do push-ups and we still need to prioritize our self-care and all those things to make sure that our, our tools, right? Our tools are sharpened and we know how to use them. So it's in a way really super like taking our mission seriously. And I feel like this is kind of funny because years ago um, when I first received my land, I had a dream that um, one day I would be building a star being training facility and it was very funny because this land you know I was like oh I'm gonna build a retreat center and it's gonna be so beautiful and I'm just gonna hang out there and pick fruits with my friends and then I have this dream where they're like this is a star being training facility and in the dream we're like doing somersaults and like you know tumbling behind rocks and like shooting lasers out of our eyes and like shooting targets with like <laughs> beams coming out of our heart you know <laughs> and it's just like this crazy thing and I was like okay that makes a lot of sense that makes a lot of sense because um, the elite and the AI and the cabal they're very organized right and they have very meticulously created this whole um, mind control system that you know they would love for the star seeds to just be very um, 
disorganized. <laughs> Just be like, la da da, we love each other, everything is great, I'm gonna keep eating sugar, you know, whatever. And <laughs> we think that we're gonna, you know, defeat the cabal, and it's just hysterical. They're just laughing in our face because they literally created the false, you know, ascension, new age mumbo jumbo. Okay. So, moving into um, grid work, I think is so amazing that so many of you are wanting to do more grid work, and I think that this really begins with one tuning our psychic frequency forks right understanding that an empath when you say i'm an empath you're literally just opening up to the reality that you can perceive and sense energy and then realizing that emotional energy is really quite a course and a big emotional uh, a big vibrational wave so you know emotions are really quite easy to pick up on now when you begin to um, meditate and do different uh, light body activation um, practices um, which um, by the way this connecting with the heart of the Pleiades the heart is a total hack for me I feel like this just like immediately activates my heart field and I begin to um, um, and these things aren't things that I just do like once a day you know they're things that are consistently inside of my awareness so I'm not um, at this point is very integrated right we're just remembering that we are god's super soldier or whatever <laughs> warriors of light warriors of light warriors of divine love and warriors of divine love need discipline <laughs> and devotion um and all of the and, and organization and all those things so when we begin to um activate our ability to sense keener and more subtle vibrations of energy that's our greatest defense and greatest weapon towards defeating interdimensional beings that have just been you know again that's why they really have worked hard on dulling our senses right because if you are keenly aware of how you're feeling all the time you move into what i call energetic sovereignty this is when you can actually tell what is your soul's inner vibration and when you can feel what is your core soul's essence vibration, then you can boundary test against anything else that's in your field, right? That means other people's energies, implants. Um, Jeremy's raging some sage for us. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Z's coming in with the fire today. I'm having a lot of fun. Thanks for being here with me. <laughs> I think that at least is funny because I make it entertaining, right? Like it's at least is entertaining and you're like, I think this is fun, but I think it's meant to be like serious, but this is fun. <laughs> How can we better master our emotions? Right. So, you know, along that same vein here, when we start to gain our sensory, subtle sensory perception, we begin to gain awareness and mastery over our own body's energy this is how we reclaim all of our energy right the first step to um, defeating the artificial reality is by completely installing the original matrix the original living matrix of divine creation in the, inside of our own body and consciousness so that we're not having any thoughts that are distorted we're not having any thoughts that are manipulated or a product of you know our our mind control and you know a lot of people are picking up on this right when you go to the city and people are talking about the pokey and they're just repeating what the tv has been saying and you walk around the city and everybody is literally repeating the same thing but and, and that's very obvious right however to a subtler degree, we all have those things that we have inherited, right, from the AI patterning. So the ways we talk, the ways we think, money, fear, scarcity, you know, all of these patterns that are very subtle that we think is just what is normal and a part of being human are actually not normal and implanted by the AI signals and mind control. And when, and when we are kept in that dullness, right we're sensing reality in this very coarse kind of way we can't pick up on those things that are inside of our being and so when we actually meditate and this is so important because when we meditate we are slowing down our being into stillness 
And then when we're in stillness, we can pick up on even the subtlest of vibrations in our field. And when we're able to pick up those very subtle vibrations in our field, that's when we open the door to these deeper levels of our healing. So for example, our ancestral trauma, our past life trauma, our present life conditioning, all of these things um, that without that, again, subtle awareness, we can, we have a hard time picking up on. Now, as you then begin to do that work on yourself, you're going to realize that your consciousness is not you know this um, contained um, separate entity from everything else do you mind grabbing my charger please thank you so much and that then when you meditate you realize that you crawl your consciousness and you can become united right you can merge with the field of all that is and then when that happens you realize that your consciousness has literally the capability to crawl into time and space to restructure to build bridges to heal to clear to restore all of these things that you learn to do inside of your own body and then as you learn how to do that inside of your own body you will be able to do that for the external and i think that this is obviously um a superpower that becomes activated and i'll tell you why it's so important thank you so much Okay, let's take a deep breath and make a sound on the exhale. Ah. One more time. Ah. Okay, very good. Okay, let's tune back into that Pleiades, heart of the Pleiades and our heart chakra here. Just connect in with that brilliant divine love energy. We are the new three-letter agency, not FBI or CIA, but God. Yes. <laughs> we are God's agents, and we all have different missions. We need to get the navy blue jackets and bust onto the crime scene to clear the grids. I can't see your name. It just says Facebook user, but I love you. <laughs> not the FBI or the CIA, but God. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh it's julie <laughs> hey julie <laughs> so i don't know why i can't see your name from um, my stream yard thing <laughs> okay okay so let's breathe for a second we're bringing in some divine light in the higher realms just going to do a brief clearing through the field here we're just rallying up some energies Whew. So let's um, tackle the amnesia field again real quick because this is actually really important for every person that's on this call and any person that's listening to this, you know, in the recording and it's going to flow me right into the Mississippi River. So I'm really excited about that. <laughs> um, okay, so the thing with the amnesia field Um, somebody said God has a lot of baggage and I prefer prime creator source. So that's beautiful. And actually God used to do the same thing in my being. I um, very consciously cleared the data and the quanta connected to that garbage, right? So that, you know, because I am, I am a source and I am a creator being. I can begin to clear and restructure and reclaim these words. And so I know the reason why I do this is because the word God is um, massly used, right? A lot of people in the world connect to God as the idea of source creator. And so if I can um, begin to restructure the cleanliness of that word, then I can crawl that new updated <laughs> version, um, updated cleansed version of God um, into the collective and I feel like that makes me feel victorious because I love that <laughs> okay so hmm Whew, okay so 
The amnesia field exists in all of us. The amnesia field is almost this um, protective coping mechanism that we've had to create because our human self, you know, really has a really hard time existing in the false matrix, right? So in order for a human being to exist in complete disconnection and experience the, the difficulty and the sadness and the trauma of being disconnected from our core essence, that's a lot of pain that, you know, if a person were to be completely connected to the pain and agony of all of that separation all the time, you know, it would be very difficult for someone to function. And so in order to function, you know, we've created these walls inside of our own consciousness to block just how um, disorienting and traumatic the false matrix really was for us. But in the process of creating those walls, we really create this barrier between us and our our pain, right? And that perpetuates, that, that fragmentation perpetuates our forgetting. So I've started to reframe um, that healing process of reclaiming those parts of ourself, those parts of my human body that have felt abused um, and traumatized by the system. And I think this is a very beautiful thing to do because it really begins to activate our sense of compassion for humanity, which is something that's very important. This is why we actually stepped into human bodies. You know, a lot of you were like, well, I remember being a deity and I just materialized on the earth and people thought I was this cool, um, you know, guru or whatever. And it's like, yeah, that was really cool. And this lifetime you decided to be born to muggle parents. <laughs> So you can be inside of the false matrix just like everybody else <laughs> and the reason for that was so that you could experience just how degrading and humiliating and traumatic it was to be absolutely abused by this slavery system that stripped you from your most essential and brilliant aspects of yourself that's your connection to the divine from inside right so because you experience that in inside the false matrix you can feel the pain and the degradation you needed to experience that amnesia absolutely right so you um, are literally creating a pathway out of the false matrix it's kind of you know like what Jesus did you know he created this pathway through death so that other people can find the light and see the light and follow it and you know it would it's like being a role model so in that way Every single one of us that is a starseed or a light worker, you know, we really chose to experience these things inside of the amnesia field. We really chose to experience the pain so that we can awaken to that pain, experience it, and learn to heal ourselves from it with the love and grace of divinity from inside of us, and thus become big brothers and sisters to all of humanity. This is really what we're here to do. And so the reason why that is bringing me flowing right into the Mississippi River is because as we were tuning into the Mississippi River this morning, um, as we were saying, the Mississippi is really kind of the spine that goes all down the United States and all of these other smaller rivers feed right into the Mississippi. And the Mississippi and rivers, they're really the lymphatic system of um, the body. And so they're, they're cleaning waste products now, I don't think any organic system was actually designed to clean things like nanites and pharmaceuticals and chemicals. These things are things that our body were not prepared to deal with because they don't exist in a natural harmonic system, right? The waste product that our bodies are made to expel is like fibers. <laughs> so um, chemicals and different kinds of things create a lot of different disturbances in our physical body as well as the planetary body and the nature body. And so when we tuned into the river, you know, there was just a lot of collective emotional energy and um, especially, um, who actually I'm just tuning into pharmaceuticals because, you know, disease, usually pharmaceuticals are used to heal, you know, to, to heal different kinds of things like people's diseases and tumors and whatnot. But the thing is that actually all disease are created by spiritual and energetic and emotional distortions. And so really 
And, you know, even my own practice, I have witnessed people's, you know, tumors and things disappear when the, the emotional energy is discharged. Okay? And so what we're really seeing with pharmaceuticals is a society of really sick people that is just getting sicker from these chemicals that are supposed to mask the symptoms or help people feel better when really the disease is there because they're existing inside of a false matrix and their bodies are compensating and trying to um, harmonize and trying to come into a state of health but it's really quite you know difficult because we're not flowing div divine energy through our source okay so then it's actually quite complicated that you know this all of these chemicals and these hormones and um, these pharmaceuticals are um, in the river and Imari says also just numbing the pain absolutely and the river has dementia yeah absolutely I was sensing that and um, Shane was telling me that um, what is it like the the when the river goes out they call it like cancer or something Yeah, so they call the place where the river feeds out into the Gulf of Mexico Cancer Alley because people that live there are just getting cancer all the time. And, you know, this is whew, kind of a reflection of the collective um, state of um, health. Okay. Whew. And Faye says, adopting traumatized geometry from this plane to have the opportunity to restore perfect sacred geometry to the patterns of consciousness. Absolutely. And so this is what we're kind of doing here with the river. Um, and for our um, healing today, we're actually going to focus on a healing for this river. And YouTube says I have 6.66k subscribers. By the way, um, I love the number six because when you look at it, it's actually just a pregnant woman. And so when you think about it, right, I want to go into this for a second because the false matrix and Satan has kind of um, hijacked six, the number six on the church bells. <laughs> it's six, it's five o'clock. Oh, it is six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing right let's talk about baphomet for a, for a moment so in really 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 ancient times baphomet was actually the goddess of fertility okay so then when the false matrix came along right because you got to remember that this these satan or whatever these people they reverse everything they twist everything they make everything the opposite and so when they came to degrade life force, right, there's nothing more sacred than a pregnant woman, right? Because they represent life. They represent the continuation of creation. And then we think about the whole universe as this pregnant goddess that's just perpetually giving birth to beauty and joy and exuberance and all of those things is the most sacred thing in the world. And so... <laughs> And so when these beings came and, you know, said that Baphomet is the devil and they totally just demonized this um, representation of fertility and we can see that unfold in our, our society um, on, you know, in the, the way that we treat birth in the hospital, you know, everything is very degraded and reversed. And so when I think of the number six again, I think pregnant woman and six is a very physical number is about giving birth and we have to start to reclaim these these very sacred and profound energies uh, because otherwise we're just playing into um, the degradation of life the degradation of creation and in a perfect creation you know none of the numbers would be scary none of the dates would be um, a portal into hell um, all of creation can be all of all of creation can exist in a state of harmony and peace okay all of it <laughs> okay so that was kind of a <laughs> side street we just <laughs> scared it down there so just want to say that we're not afraid we're not afraid of sixes they're quite divine and beautiful if we can look at it as a pregnant woman let's just go ahead and do a 
clearing around that in the collective consciousness. Okay. When <laughs> that being said, we're gonna um, head into our clearing on the river. Thank you so much. It's just the best. Um, and I'm so excited that um, we got to have this chat today. Um, yeah. If you guys have any questions about grid work, psychic grid work, I know we went through a lot of <laughs> conversationing in one day, but this is my favorite thing, so I get very excited. And um, I know that a lot of these concepts, you know, talking about training, like I'm getting ready to basically spend the next four months um, when I get back home and recording very specific modules for the school and basically it's going to be you know this um, curriculum that's going to be able to bring uh, break all these concepts down into bite-sized pieces so we have practices every day we have things that we can do we have you know different um, breakdowns of the different um, difficulty levels of things so we can really access um, these energies so um, that being said we're going to do a collective healing for the Mississippi River today connecting in with the collective consciousness of the United States um, I think that the United States is kind of representing um, a peak in some sort of planetary awakening process I think that the um, the, that United States could be <laughs> could be a great big brother for the rest of the world not in the bad way not in the mind control kind of way just in like the benevolent like we could really lead the way because you know we have a bunch of people that are um, comfortable in a first world reality and if the people could really take responsibility for our life here on the planet then we you know as a country could be a great um, leader in planetary healing and I'm really pushing for that and it's not looking so it's not looking hot yet but it you know it's the, we just gotta um, project stronger <laughs> right get serious about our work and get serious about believing that we are creator beings because you know in the new age community we kind of say these things like oh I'm a creator being and I create my reality but you know we don't actually get super serious about it and it's time to get really serious about it do you activate the golden grid when you do your work? I work with golden energy, liquid golden energy a lot. Um, um, I don't know um, what specific golden grid that you're talking about, but there's definitely... <laughs> definitely work with golden energy. Okay, so on that being said, I'm going to... Oh. At Earth Star Academy, we project on purpose. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I'm loving all these jokes. Okay. Ooh. Let's see here. Oh, this, I love that one. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That is brilliant so we got a suggestion here to visualize all the children free of masks and i think that this is a big thing so i think we're definitely going to do that's a great idea dragons yeah work with dragons a lot <laughs> a lot dragons <laughs> are a daily practice okay um let's see if i want to maybe oh that's good Maybe it's a little bit too close. Here. I'm going to do this. Hello? Crystal consciousness, what does it mean? Great question. Well, I think that crystals exist 
in a like when you look at a crystal it's almost like between realms it's like between physical and liquid and i think that they carry these lattices through the quantum reality and it's just this very pristine um original structure and so when i think crystalline consciousness i think you know consciousness that feels like it's in the um, vibration of those original structures and i think that all consciousness to me feels like there's a texture right so when you you feel like happiness is a texture is a frequency and anger is a texture or a frequency and greed and and divinity and love all of these things are different vibrations or textures of feeling inside the consciousness <laughs> okay back up a little bit right right into the river happening just as a tutorial on doing this work so basically when I um, connect in with the ocean and I'll, I'll basically start to sing you know a familiar sound that connects me in with um, my oracle channel and then eventually I'll click into the space so if it's rocks or the river I'll click in and then I'll you know, it's all oh, just be like a, a steady um, new rhythm that comes through. And so for this first sound that's coming up, I'm basically connecting in with um, the bottom of the river. And somehow this is unlocking um, the memory field in the water because what we're doing is um, when we're trying to clear, like we're, we're moving through a clearing energy through the water and somebody was saying that we're bringing in the original water template or the crystalline original living light energy so in order to do that we have to clear out the old memory so that we can kind of insert this crystalline new water energy so this is what this um, sound is doing
spirit of the river and it almost feels like she's waking up out of hibernation as somebody else was saying earlier too um, I think that a lot of nature spirits if they're not tended to and they're not taken care of they can um, really feel like they're abused right when we pollute these um, rivers
Take a really long deep breath into the heart. So we got some more work to do here. You can feel a lot of um, resistance. Um, somebody is saying that it feels like the river is overwhelmed and that makes a lot of sense, right? Because the system is always trying to cleanse itself and so, you know, this um, Ooh, it feels like the river is not only polluted with you know the regular things that you, you think um, are pollutants but really with AI as well with nanites and chemicals and different things like that and really is like a representation too of how we Jeremy stubbed his toe I'm so sorry to hear that <laughs> but oh yeah I'm really tuning into all of the um, just like, again, connecting in with that pharmaceutical energy. I'm not saying that, you know, medicine hasn't saved lives because sure, modern medicine has saved lives, but 90% of the time, people that are taking that stuff, you know, they're still going to McDonald's, they're still watching TV, and they're, you know, it's like, if we're not taking care of our, our body and keeping ourselves healthy and we're just using these chemicals, then what we're doing is actually polluting our body even more. And all of that yucky, blah, um, energy is kind of reflecting in this uh, water system. So there's more work for us to do here. So we're going to um, pull in some more frequencies here. Mari says, the original earth template, love and reciprocity from humans is intrinsic to the nature spirit's happiness and flourishing. Absolutely, that is true. Every place that I've been, you know, the rocks are so excited when I go out there with my speaker. They're like, oh my God, finally a human. It's been 2000 years, you know, like <laughs> waiting to, to hang out with you. And so, um, yes, we all need to get out on the land and love her so much and hold her through this transition. I feel like we need to hold the earth and the nature spirits, you know, the most um, because really they're, they're what's holding everyone else, right? So, tuning into the river feels like masses of sludge, sickness, and nausea. Um, yes, faces the river simultaneously exists in the pristine dimension. We can tune into that timeline and help her remember. This is brilliant. Right? It's kind of like if you um, bring in the healthy frequency and overlay it, right? this restores the health and the structure of the river. So if you can tune in to just pristine, beautiful, magnificent water, goddess energy, and then just like, you know, pulling the reality, pulling the physical reality into that timeline, and we, we try that. And then... Um, as we're pulling in the second frequency here, um, yeah, let, let's also pull in the energy of children being totally free. You know, not, I think not wearing masks is the first step to that. <laughs> how about, how about they're just happy and they're free and they're playing, you know, in a world where nature is safe and nature is not full of venom that, you know, I feel like at this point nature is creating um, protections for from her like against us right it's 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 like a lot of these rivers they are filled with um, amoebas and parasites and it's like that's not normal so here's what we're doing this time pulling in pristine energy and overlaying on the river and seeing all the children the whole world free and they're happy they're learning about meditation in school and <laughs> they're definitely nowhere close to masks right we're not we're not doing that 
so okay. I hope, um, let's let's do this.
Mm. Good work, everybody. I felt really good. Just taking a minute to connect with the water, the water elementals, how they're so peaceful and serene and loving when they are healthy. And that's how we are meant to exist in our emotions inside of our body in this beautiful, serene, deep connection to life to nature to creation and we're bringing back that original template vibration of the water energy and sending so much love to the water <sighs> and so thank you so much for tuning in um who was it that was talking about the dragons? I think it was... Gaia. So actually, I think that dragon line is a great topic for next week. Um, so for next week's grid work, um, Starseed Mission Support, we're going to do dragon energy and dragon lines. And that sounds like a great uh, topic. Um... I'm going to be running a one-day in-person retreat event in Arkansas, actually in like a week and a half. I really didn't pre-plan, um, but if you're feeling like um, you're meant to be out here with us in Arkansas, September 5th, we're going to be doing three workshops and three DNA activations, um, and there's going to be an organic lunch included, and Hot Springs, Arkansas is a amazing place for grid work it's on the i think it's on the um foot of the of mount ida which is one of the major nodes on the planet and so this is a place that we can bring in new template architecture um onto the planet and so that means we bring those new architecture or ways of being or experiences inside of our own body and so if you're feeling like um, creating a timeline portal we step into a higher dimensional experience of ourself um, and simultaneously do that for the planet um, come and hang out with us uh, the link is in the description box or whatever and otherwise um, I will see you guys next week for our dragon episode of our grid work themed star scene mission support I love you guys so much and bye for now